human history has been shaped by the almost infinite number of conflicts fought between tribes, nations and empires. However often some of the most brutal and incredible of these are overlooked and virtually unknown to most. Here are my choices for 5 of the most brutal but lesser known conflicts in history. Number 5. The War of the Triple Alliance Also known as the Great War, this conflict was one of the bloodiest in South American history, fought between the tiny landlocked nation of Paraguay and a triple alliance of Brazil, Argentina and Uruguay. It's estimated that anywhere from 60% up to a staggering 90% of Paraguay's population would perish during the six years it lasted, the bitter war reducing Paraguay to ashes and perhaps leaving just 28,000 men over the age of 15 alive by the time peace was declared. In 1864 Paraguay was a nation seemingly on the rise, however it was surrounded on both sides by its much larger neighbours, Brazil and Argentina, who had claimed much of Paraguay as their own and considered their smaller neighbour as nothing more than an upstart rebel province. Paraguay's leader, President Francisco Solano Lopez, sought to build up his nation so that it might act as a third force to rival Argentina and Brazil, and had grown his country's army to a force of over 50,000 men. It was against this backdrop of already high tension that war would break out in October of 1864, when Brazil invaded Uruguay in support of a revolution that was taking place there. Fearing that this interference might upset the region's balance of power, Paraguay declared war on Brazil, however to get to Uruguay, Lopez needed permission from Argentina to march his troops through their territory, permission which Argentina refused. Undeterred, Lopez sent his forces through anyway, effectively declaring war on Argentina. Despite Paraguay's assistance, Uruguay quickly fell to the Brazilian attack, and a new government was installed, which was little more than a Brazilian puppet. Brazil, Uruguay and Argentina then organised a triple alliance, agreeing to join forces against Paraguay and divide up her land once she was defeated. Paraguay, a tiny nation of just 450,000 people, now found herself standing alone against a triple alliance whose combined population was 11 million. Outnumbered, outgunned and surrounded on all sides, Paraguayan forces were slowly pushed back further and further into their own land yet continued to offer fierce resistance every step of the way. Losses on both sides were high, yet neither side was willing to contemplate a ceasefire, with each nation's leader feeling on a bound to see their bitter rival toppled. Against such odds, the Paraguayan army was slowly annihilated during a bloody war of attrition in which they were fighting for their country's very survival. However, Lopez still refused to surrender and fled north where he continued a guerrilla war that would nearly doom his people to extinction. Every man in Paraguay had been drafted into his army, leading to a massive labour shortage which caused a devastating famine. Disease and starvation tore through his countrymen and even children began to be recruited into the ranks often armed with nothing more than sticks painted to look like guns. Lopez was finally cornered and killed on March 1st, 1870, his death bringing to end a conflict which had seen Paraguay's population plummet from an estimated 525,000 to just 221,000 the year after the war ended. Of these quarter of a million citizens who had barely survived, just 28,000 were men, suggesting that perhaps as many as 9 out of every 10 men in Paraguay would lose their lives in the war, either due to fighting, disease or starvation, making it one of the most statistically dangerous wars in human history. Number 4. The Taiping Rebellion In 1851 the delirious fever dreams of one man would lead to a 15 year long rebellion which would ravage almost all of China, destroying over 600 cities, ending the lives of at least 20 million people and shaking the ruling dynasty to its very core as a seemingly unstoppable swarm of fanatical rebels slaughtered their way through the country and the world's most populated nation descended into a hellish anarchy. The mid 19th century was already a time of great turmoil for China, its people plagued by natural disasters and its population growing out of control. The ruling Qing dynasty had done little to alleviate the suffering of the common people and a series of military defeats at the hands of western powers combined with economic problems and a deep resentment for the Manchu administration who were seen as hated foreigners by many had led to widespread unrest across the country. One man would serve as the spark which would set the powder keg that was 19th century China alight. Hong Xiuquan was a seemingly unremarkable man 
who had desperately sought to join the civil service as an administrator. However, despite intending to serve his government, he would end up nearly destroying it. By 1847, he had failed the imperial examinations three times, the trauma of which supposedly led him to fall into a 30-day long fever, during which he experienced intense visions, the interpretations of which led him to believe that he was the son of God, a younger brother of Jesus Christ, and had been sent to conquer China and establish what he called the heavenly kingdom of great harmony. He organized a new religious group called the God Worshipping Society, which was an unusual Chinese version of Old Testament Christianity. However, after experiencing persecution by local officials, he led the group in an open rebellion and set about fulfilling the goals he believed had been set for him by God. Seeking to convert the Chinese people to his version of Christianity, overthrow the ruling Manchus, and transform the entire Chinese state. As the rebellion spread, his army grew to over 500,000 soldiers, as poor workers, criminal gangs, and starving peasants were all drawn by his promises of common ownership of the land, which in a way marked the origins of Chinese communism. For 14 years his forces waged a bitter campaign against government troops, his fanatical followers engaged in near-total war, which saw incredible atrocities committed on both sides. Farmland was intentionally destroyed, leading to a famine which killed millions, and captured cities would routinely be the scene of mass executions as those suspected of aiding the enemy were massacred. With much of the country under rebel control, it seemed as if victory was imminent, however the movement became plagued by internal feuds, divisions and defections, and began to fall apart. With assistance from Britain and America, both of whom were now concerned by the potential loss of trade a rebel victory might cause, the Qing armies began pushing the rebels back. By 1864 the government had taken back most of the rebel-held territory, and Hong Xiu Chuan either committed suicide or died from food poisoning. Yet despite the rebel capital falling, hundreds of thousands of rebel troops still littered the countryside and would continue to fight to the end with a terrifying degree of fanaticism. It was not until August 1871 that the rebellion was finally stamped out, however the cost had been enormous. 20 million people had been killed as a result of fighting, famine and disease in a conflict that was one of the bloodiest wars in all of human history and a grim taste of the even greater carnage that awaited China in the 20th century. Number 3. The Thirty Years' War What initially began as a dispute over religion, quickly escalated into a murderous bloodbath as all of the European powers and dynasties vied for power and land in a conflict that would ravage Germany, leaving up to 8 million people dead by the time it ended in 1648 and transforming the map of Europe forever. The war first broke out in 1618 when the Holy Roman Emperor tried to enforce Catholicism on areas of Germany that were staunchly Protestant. These states rebelled against the interference and while the Emperor eventually won, his victory alarmed nearby Protestant powers, resulting in Denmark and then Sweden invading Germany, supposedly to protect the interests of their fellow Protestants. The war quickly escalated and drew in all of the major powers of Europe, each acting to protect their own interests and expand their power and influence. While the fight was initially between the Catholics and Protestants, the lines began to blur as Catholic powers intervened to assist Protestants, and vice versa. The majority of the fighting would take place on German land with devastating results. Roving bands of unpaid mercenaries collected payment in other ways plundering and ravaging the towns and farms they came across, enriching themselves while leaving nothing that might be of use to the enemy. Caught in the middle were the ordinary farmers and civilians who, even if they were lucky enough to escape with their lives, were now left with nothing, unable to plant new crops or continue their businesses. The result was the rapid spread of disease and famine, which, in addition to the fighting, claimed huge numbers of lives and left much of Germany and Europe nothing more than a smouldering wasteland. The population of the Holy Roman Empire was reduced by at least 25%, with some estimating that up to 40% perished, equating to over 6 million people. Some areas of northeastern Germany were especially hard hit, and it's thought that by the time the war ended, two-thirds of the population in those regions had died. The Swedish army alone is believed to have destroyed over 2,000 castles, 
18,000 villages and 1,500 towns, and it would take Germany over 100 years to recover from such levels of destruction. The chaos and hardship unleashed by the war enabled hysteria to spread amongst the people, many of whom were quick to blame the disasters that had befallen them on more supernatural forces. Allegations of witchcraft became widespread, and savage witch hunts engulfed the land, dooming thousands more to an early and violent death. The peace treaty that was finally agreed laid the foundations for the modern-day nation-state, as borders were better fixed and the mercenary armies that had caused so much suffering were phased out in favour of better-trained and well-disciplined standing national armies, perhaps inadvertently planting the seeds for the even more devastating conflicts between modern nation-states that would occur in the centuries to come. Number 2. The An Lushan Rebellion Civil wars are some of the most especially bloody and destructive conflicts that can be fought by man, yet the An Lushan Rebellion, which took place in China in 755 AD, is widely viewed as the deadliest civil war in human history, with upper estimates placing the number of lives lost as high as 36 million, which was about two-thirds of the population of China at the time, and around 17% of the entire world's population. The mid-8th century was already a time of turmoil for the Chinese Empire, which had been embroiled in a number of costly wars around its vast borders, yet it was the rise of one of the country's own generals which would nearly see China destroyed. An Lushan was believed to have been a foreigner who had quickly risen in the ranks of the Chinese army and became a favourite of the emperor himself. General An Lushan was given control of a massive army consisting of over 150,000 men, making him the most powerful general in the empire, however it would not take long for ambition to get the better of him. By the end of 755, he made the decision to mobilise his battle-hardened army and turn against his former liege, proclaiming himself emperor and attempting to found a new dynasty to replace the ruling Tang dynasty. He marched on the capital, his army growing stronger as defectors rallied to his cause, and he eventually crushed the Tang army that stood between him and his prize. Upon hearing news that the path to his capital was now undefended, the Tang emperor fled south fearing for his life, and by 756, An Lushan had taken China's ancient capital, devastating the city's massive population in the process, with perhaps one million losing their lives as his men looted and plundered the wealthy metropolis. Yet the general's new dynasty would not last. Just two years after the rebellion commenced, An Lushan was murdered by his own son, who in turn was killed by a friend of his father. The new rebel emperor would continue An Lushan's work, however he too would also fall victim to his own ambitious son. The Tang dynasty was able to take advantage of the chaos caused amongst the rebel ranks by this series of patricides, and with the use of thousands of mercenaries was able to slowly retake all of the land that had previously been lost, completely crushing the rebellion by 763, eight tragic years after it had begun. The massive civil war had not only inflicted huge numbers of battle casualties, but also caused the spread of famine and disease as a result of the chaos it unleashed killing unbelievable numbers of civilians. While the post-war census that showed that over two-thirds of the population was missing could of course be as a result of the breakdown of the census system, it's undisputed that the bloody conflict was one of the greatest human tragedies of all time and a chilling demonstration of how one man's ambition can cost millions of lives. Number 1. The Northern Crusades the very mention of the word Crusades conjures up images of heavily armoured Christian knights battling Muslim armies for control of the Holy Lands. However, at the same time, another equally as brutal series of Crusades was taking place on European soil in the lands around the Baltic Sea, as Christian warrior monks fought a series of vicious campaigns lasting hundreds of years in an effort to conquer, convert and exterminate the last remaining pagan tribes on the European continent. By the 12th century, most of Europe had already converted to Christianity, however the people who lived in the lands of modern-day Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania stubbornly held on to the old traditions and practices that had once been dominant across the continent, but a baptism of fire was soon to spread across their lands. Conflicts between these pagan tribes and their Christian neighbours had been fought for centuries, however with the Crusades in the Middle East raging, 
Europe had become increasingly flooded, with mercenaries and military factions like the Teutonic Order, many of whom had failed to achieve the success they had dreamt of in the Holy Lands, and were now looking for new opportunities to establish themselves closer to home. The pagan lands in the northeast must have seemed like ripe targets for conquest, and with the Catholic Church keen to prevent the Russian Orthodox Church from expanding any further west, this pagan buffer zone could open up a possible route to eventually converting all Orthodox Christians and reuniting Christendom. In 1195, Pope Celestine III could wait no longer, and a crusade was called. An order of German knights called the Teutonic Order now had official permission to invade any and all pagan lands in Europe, and were granted total authority over any land they conquered. Such a promise proved tempting for any man who wished to further his own ambitions, and despite the invasion supposedly being about bringing the light of Christianity to the savage pagans, for many of the knights in charge it instead became about the conquest of land rather than the saving of souls. Over several decades of near-continuous warfare spread across a series of separate invasions, the zealous warriors of the Teutonic Order carved a bloody path across the Baltic coast, converting when possible, but often exiling or simply slaughtering those tribes who refused to accept Christianity. Yet their invasion was not without opposition. The pagans they encountered routinely offered fierce resistance, and the battles that would be fought were especially brutal and savage with countless thousands dying as the opposing forces clashed again and again. The pagan natives of these lands would not give up their ways without a fight, and after being defeated many tribes often chose death over conversion, with lands frequently rendered completely uninhabited after being conquered. German settlers quickly moved into these conquered lands, and by the time the last pagan tribes were defeated, the order had grown to become a formidable force. Yet such power made them new enemies, and they were eventually defeated by a coalition of Polish and Lithuanian forces in 1410, when during a disastrous battle the majority of the Teutonic leadership was wiped out. While the lands were eventually taken over by their neighbours, the bloody legacy of the fanatical Teutonic Crusaders lives on as a reminder of the slaughter that man can unleash in the name of God. So those are my choices for five of the most brutal but lesser known conflicts in history. Let me know which other wars and conflicts you would have included in the list in the comments below, and I'll see you again soon.